After two rounds of the FIDE Grand Prix tournament taking place in Tashkent, we already have a clear leader. I'd like to take a look at one of those round two games between Maxime Vashilagrav playing with the white pieces against Rustam Kazimjanov. Maxime Vashilagrav having a very good year. He's, well, number 11 in the live ratings list. And he played in the Sinkfield Cup, uh, scored 4 out of 10, not brilliant, but also not a disaster. And it shows that he is edging closer to, uh, well, the, the really top players in the world. Now the game has started out as a Berlin defence. Let's see what MVL can do against it. Well, he's played this rather tame move, D3. He prefers not to go into this dreaded endgame, which is so difficult for white to try to uh, exploit this theoretical advantage. But even by playing this tame move d3, white is a little better. Anand likes to play, and others, like to play this move. This is a very popular continuation, and you simply have a, a superior pawn structure. Now, Black's position is very solid and has two bishops, so it's also very playable for black, but that's quite a popular way of playing. But instead of capturing on c6, uh, Vashilokov played knight d2. He just kept his options open. Um, this isn't so popular. Now, uh, it's not clear why. <laughs> I mean, this is all openings are so much to do with fashion. I mean, maybe one reason is that if black wants, then you can simplify. I mean, white is still slightly better here as well, but okay, that's another story. Um, d6 is the most common reply, so basically, you know, just strengthening the pawn here. And castles. And now, Cousin John have played bishop d7. I mean, castles is the most normal move here, but okay, he preferred to do something about this potential damaging of his pawn structure. I mean, I think this is a reasonable move. Now c3. I think the move that I like best for black here is just to play a6, actually. As we'll see, that would uh, rule out some of the problems that black has later with this bishop. So putting the question to the bishop here and allowing the bishop to slip back to safety on a7. But instead, Cousin John of Castle. Now this looks like a completely normal move, but uh, Vashilagrav is, is now able to exploit um, somehow Black's pieces on the queen side. So Knight C4. The whole idea is to try and well trap this bishop, um, not actually trapping and taking it, but to exchange it off favourably. So. The move a6 looks normal here, but now with the knight on c4, white can play knight a5. That's a bit annoying. And say after this move, well, black's pawn structure has, has been damaged. And well, let's say bishop g5. It's a bit annoying to have the, the bishop over here and not on e7. Um, and, you know, maybe queen a4 is coming. I mean, this is certainly more comfortable for white. So that's why h6 was played, because to rule out this potentially unpleasant pin. But now b4, and this is actually very annoying for black. Obviously a5 trapping the bishop is the threat. Now if black meets this with a6, then, well, white is just better here. You know, th th these pawns are weak. Uh, okay, not immediately, but this is a long-term chronic weakness in, in Black's structure. Cousin John of tries a5, but this is also problematic. And now uh, MVL took on a5, and however Black recaptures really here, he has problems with his pawn structure. So, for example, pawn takes could be met by bishop a3, and maybe rook b1, and you know, maybe even a knight swinging around here. Um, 
well, rook takes you could say is is perhaps similar to the game, but you know you can see that these pawns on an open file plus this pawn on d6 these are weaknesses, whereas white does not have those problems. Knight a5 played. Uh, well, let's see how this works out. But h3 from Vachelagov. So this prevents bishop g4. And well, he's confident that you know these these weak pawns will tell in the end. So cousin John of breaks with d5. Okay, understandable, but it doesn't solve all his problems. Let's see what happens. So MVL took in the middle, and now not, Queen takes. So it looks as though Black has got some freedom here, and you know wants to target this pawn on d3. But actually, White is still better here. So the queen needs to keep holding on to the pawn on e5, bishop b2. So already black has a bit of a dilemma. How is he going to defend the pawn here? So after knight d7, well, there are two decent moves. Rook e1 with pressure here. Or you can even play knight takes and then rook e1 and win the piece back. Two decent options. So cousin John of pushed with e4 and rook e1 anyway rook d8 and now bishop takes and in this way the e pawn drops now here is a really crucial moment in the game because cousin Janov chooses not to recapture his pawn but after that i think you know he goes down slowly but surely. Um, he could have played rook takes pawn here. So white takes and the queen takes the rook check in the corner. So you can see that black wins the pawn back. Black is still worse here though and Cousin Jarnov clearly wasn't happy with this position. His knight is offside. These pawns aren't great here but Okay, this is a slight problem for White. He has to keep hold of it. But I mean, maybe the main problem is that if White holds this pawn on c4, then basically, you know, his pieces look better than Black's. So, I mean, I think this is a slightly unpleasant position for Black. But maybe this is Cousin Jarnov's best chance. But I can understand why he was reluctant to play into this. You know, maybe there are moves like rook d4 and perhaps coming in here. I mean, maybe it's possible to try to even, you know, get some kind of kind of advance on the king side while this knight is way across on the other side of the board. In the game, it simply didn't work out well. Knight b3 played. Obviously, this can't be captured because the rook is on prees in the corner. But now uh, MVL just hangs on to his extra pawn, and it's a big extra pawn. Queen a1, excellent move. Um, so looking to trade queens. And these pawns are still long-term weaknesses as well. Uh, this move, queen a1, really contests the d4 square as well. And after this, then white advances. And this is just extremely unpleasant for black to play. I mean, I think basically... Black is just lost here uh, without really any counterplay at all. You can see that white controls the two open files and this pawn structure just blocks out black's pieces. So black has zero counterplay and actually, well, let, let me just go through the, the remaining moves of the game, but I think they require very little commentary. The most important thing in these kind of positions is not to rush it. Um, here, well, if black exchanges, then of course you can hang on to this pawn. And then the king comes forward, and again you can move forward from there. Uh, rook c7 played. Okay, now shouldn't exchange. And in this way, white manages to break into the black position. And now, okay, instead of rushing it, moving in with a knight or rook straight away, instead 
king e2 is a good move. So first of all, just bring the king up, making sure this pawn is going to be protected, and then move forward. Here, Cousin John have resigned, understandably. Uh, let me just go on a little bit. Let's try this move. King comes forward, ready to play into d4. Maybe the rook comes here, and knight c8. And this one is going to drop very soon. Very simple winning position for white. So, Maxime Vachilegrave has two out of two. Uh, he's in the lead on his own. And Nakamura and Andrekin just behind on one and a half. It's an 11 round tournament, still a long way to go. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how players like uh, Gelfand and Caruana, who won the Grand Prix tournament in Baku, how they fare. Are they going to be tired out? Let's see. Um, Gelfand has one point, 50% at the moment, and Caruana on half out of two. Still a long way to go.